welcome back everybody to another review in the Asian Film Marathon and we're looking at another film by Yasujiro Ozu, famous Japanese director and we're looking at his final film, An Autumn Afternoon. So it was his last film in 1962 and it is shot in gorgeous colour and I just want to say I've enjoyed all the, the Ozu films, this marks my fifth one. I've enjoyed them all but I definitely wouldn't put them up with my favourite directors. I really appreciate his style. Um, I think it's, it's great, nice and tranquil, but I don't think any of his films are masterpieces. Maybe it'll be something I'll grow to appreciate even more and like when I get older, you know, because his films are very mature and it's all about those kind of themes. And I think I will appreciate it when I get older, but for the time being, I do really love his work. I do appreciate him. I do love the, the style he has, but I don't think he's one of the, the greats, the true great directors. Well, no, he is one of the three great directors, but not, he's not up there for my list, personally. Um, so again, it's a very similar theme explored by Ozu in many of his films about family and tradition, uh, modernity, parenthood, and those kind of things. It's very similar to Late Spring. So on the back here it says, Not a afternoon shots you inevitably. Eclipse of older generations by a reverent youth. So we look at um, Hirayama. The concerned father to the unmarried Michiko and he wants to marry he wants his daughter to get married and he's got his friends who also this theme's going around as well about wanting to get their children married and you know move on and try to adjust to the new life because uh, you have to say goodbye to your old life and let your children move on that sort of thing and that's what's explored in the late spring as well and there's a lot of the same themes in here going on with some of the other films that he's done and definitely with a family member not being there. Every single film that I've seen there's been a family member that's either died or just isn't present and here this time it's the mother because you've got the father-daughter relationship and it is really beautiful to watch. Uh, the acting is just, it's so natural and great and you do, you really think that they are, you know, family and that bond that they have, it, it just comes up so naturally in, in the, the performance, especially by uh, what's his name? Chishu Ryu, who's just a fantastic actor. Uh, again, we've got his trademark style with the low camera angles, you know, filming them during dialogue scenes at the dinner table and whatnot. And, you know, it's got the, it's, it's got his style again with shooting, you know, just shots of nothing happening, empty rooms and stuff, and it's really nice. And I really like the opening, which is four or five shots showing you different chimneys of factories and buildings and that did make me think no, not buildings, in fact just factories and chimneys and smoke going up you know like Japanese industry and it did get me thinking you know is this what the film's going to be about you know kind of a modernity it is it is sort of about that break of modernity because this is 1960s Japan early 60s and you do get that sense that it is all about modernity and tradition and you know what's ahead because you've got the you've got this uh a post-war kind of state that people talk about when they talk about this film uh, the rise of industry as well in Japan and you really did get a sense of that because um, Hirayama is a businessman and you see the, the people wearing suits and everything and I just thought you know, this is showing Japanese business you know that, that, that era of that change and that's tying in with the themes of course with him wanting him having to move on and you know get on with his own life and let his kill let his try and get his daughter married so he can adjust to a new life, different life and let his children be free because they're not going to be there forever so it's to bid his old life for a while really and that does come across and again you know not just with that one storyline you've got these other characters you've got one who um, has a, a much younger wife and you've got I keep forgetting his name Hirayama's kids as well and they're family life and it is about things like parenthood, Japanese tradition and also marriage as well because you've got um, his son who's married as well and I love all the humour and stuff that's in the film as well it does have some light humour in there and it's really touching and funny to watch at times um, such as the characters getting drunk and one of the scenes that was it was one that put a smile on my face it's when they were um, it's when Hirayama meets someone that used to be the, he used to be the captain of during the arm during the war period, and they hadn't seen each other in over twenty years, thirty years, something like that. And they put on this like anthem or a theme or something, like a marching tune, and they start you know reminiscing. You know you can see that they have a history that, that went way back, 
and there's something about that scene that put a smile on my face um, you know because it was just such a light hearted scene in a bar and I really like that scene but this is another great Ozu film again he's not one of my absolute favourite directors but he's a fantastic Japanese director you can see his influence in other films um, today and not too long ago and he, and he is one of the most important film directors no doubt and I think you'll really enjoy digging into his films and the Blu-ray release is really good and again with some loads of these BFI Blu-ray releases you get another film thrown in and this time it is the 1948 film A Hen in the Wind which I haven't seen yet but I'll probably get around to it eventually and it um, and yeah you've got a booklet again which has some essays in there about the films which is always great and again to do a format edition I love the dual format idea because it means you can lend it to people because not everyone has a blu-ray player but they should because shouldn't they uh, so not packed out with special features or anything but really good print I mean the colour looks great and that's another thing I just want to say I absolutely love the cinematography in this film it was really gorgeous and it's a really good film to end on I think because you know it's got those themes that he explored throughout his whole career and I think this is one of his best films, it might be my favourite of his next to Tokyo story which I don't think is a masterpiece but I do appreciate it and I did really enjoy it but I think Ozu is one of those ones you know I he is very acclaimed but he just doesn't do it for me uh, on that scale I keep saying that and I keep saying flipping I keep repeating myself so before I keep repeating myself here I just want to say Ozu is a good director and this is a great film, and I do recommend it, as I have with most of the films in this marathon. So, hope you check out the rest of the videos. Uh, again, drop comments below if you've seen this film. If not, check it out, of course. And until next time, everyone, I'll see you then.